Hello there and welcome to Spiritual How To's. I'm so glad to see you here. Whether it's your first time or your 10th time or your 17th time, thanks for checking in. I want to talk to you about today about a man who was living in quarantine. He lived outside the city complex. He was isolated from everybody else and yet he wound up being at the feet of Jesus. I want to talk to you about what made the difference, what changed things for him. And maybe with that story, we can do the same for us. What's the topic today? The topic today is gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. Luke chapter 17 tells us the story of 10 leprous men. And it says that they were living together because they were lepers. The only people they could associate with were lepers. They were living outside the city because of their infectious disease. Leprosy was very infectious. They had to walk around covering their face and they had to keep their distance, not just social distancing six feet, but keep their distance and cry, unclean, unclean, unclean. It was a horrible disease to have. Um, and there's 10 of these guys that had it, so they hung out together. And we see them standing together in this particular situation. The Bible says they were distanced from Jesus as he walked by. He was walking by them and they saw him at the distance and they cried out, have mercy on us, have mercy on us. They couldn't go near, they couldn't approach, but they cried out. The Bible tells us in Luke 17 verses uh, 13 and 14 that Jesus looked at them and he said, he looked at them and he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. That's all he said. He didn't say, okay. He didn't say your sins are forgiven. He didn't say you're healed. He said, go show yourself to the priests. Well, that was normal procedure in case you're thinking that's weird. It wasn't weird at all. In fact, that was normal procedure for anyone who was a Jew that had um, been smitten with leper, uh, as a leper, that if they felt they were cured, they had to go show themselves to the priest. And we read about those laws in Leviticus 13 and 14. Nine of the guys understood what Jesus was saying. Oh, okay, we'll go show ourselves to the priest that we've been cleaned of this infectious disease. Because they were Jews. They understood. But one of the guys, it says in verse 16, was a Samaritan. That means he had no religious framework for what Jesus was telling them to do. He was a total unbeliever. He didn't know what the heck it meant. Go show yourself to the priest. Okay. All 10 of them are on their way, guess where to? Yeah, to see the priest. They're on their way to see the priest because that's where this Lord Jesus told them to go. And the Bible tells us in verse 14 that on their way, they were healed of their leprosy. Well, the nine kept on walking. They just kept in step head in to see the priest to have this sucker verified. See, I'm all clean. They're going to offer their bird and their scarlet thread and everything they had to do to prove that they were cleansed. They just kept wide on walking. But there was one, the Bible says in Luke chapter 17, verse 15. That one Samaritan, the Bible says this, he turned back, glorifying God, and he fell at Jesus' feet, giving thanks to him. The Samaritan didn't have a priest. He didn't have a religious framework. He turned back and he went to Jesus with his gratitude and he poured out his gratitude and his praise to God at the feet of Jesus. Oh, what a model. Jesus' response to that, Jesus' response was, uh, where are the other nine? Weren't there ten? What happened to the other nine, my fellow Jews? You see, the Samaritan was healed. He was totally received by Jesus. And he left Jesus well. He left fully whole and well. His thankfulness caused him to be brought closer to Jesus. And I submit to you, my friend, the, the moral of this story and the lesson that I've learned in my life, and I know you're learning, is thankfulness really will bring us closer 
to the Lord. Dare we say that being thankful will bring you to closer to Jesus? Yes, we dare say that. You see, learning to be thankful, learning to express it, is what overcomes our infectious sin. Learning to express gratitude overcomes our, our isolation and overcomes our separation from people and our separation from God. Learning to express gratitude and be thankful. We can train ourselves to be thankful. We can train ourselves to show thanks. Without being thankful, though, I don't believe we're going to fully please God. And that's why we're addressing this simple concept in this short little video. So you see, sometimes it's the believers in God who become spiritually ungrateful and deaf. Believers, they just become either hard-hearted or just too much in their religious duty that we religious people forget to express thanks. Sometimes it's outsiders that are more responsive than God's people. But drawing close, drawing close to Jesus in thankfulness and in dependence will bring us wellness. We will be made well, whole in our body, soul, mind, and spirit. You see, the truth is, humans, we humans, <laughs> we struggle with gratitude. We really do. Sometimes we don't appreciate everything that God's done for us until it's gone, right? When was the last time you thanked him for the food in your refrigerator or the car or your housing or your running water? How about that almost car accident that just happened? I had one of those just a couple days ago. You see, our experiences, I believe, are designed in part to help us, to teach us to be thankful. Really, they really are. So do we choose to thank him? You know the research about thankfulness and gratitude. It, the research shows us by study after study after study that gratitude makes us happier. In fact, gratitude also makes us more successful. Just being grateful makes us more successful. As opposed to that crazy victimhood culture that we're dealing with today. Do we lash out at people? Or do we look up? Which one are we? And is it in good circumstances that we give thanks as well as bad circumstances that we give thanks? How often do you feel grateful? How often do you express that thanks? You see, gratitude, I've said it three times now, is a part of our well-being. You can tell if someone's well spiritually by how grateful they are, how thankful they are. But it requires actions, not just thinking. Gratitude requires it to be spoken, to be acted upon. That is what is necessary, not just words. You see, my friend, I firmly believe we need to get this right. We totally need to get it to right if we're get it right if we're looking to please the Lord and walk in wholeness and wellness. You see, we can choose to walk in resentment, entitlement, and envy. Sounds like a lovely life, right? Or we can choose to walk in gratitude, generosity, and goodwill. The healed leper was loud about his boisterous praise to God and in his boisterous expressions of thanks to Jesus. It says he was boisterous. He was loud. He loudly proclaimed. Are you? Am I? I, I think I can say that my life is a constant live stream of thanks. I'm not kidding. I really believe it is. I speak it loud and nearly in every situation, I speak it out. In fact, I've even said, while I've been working down at the harbor, oh, thank you, Lord. And someone said, did you just say thank you, Lord? Oh, yeah, I did. Or, that's awesome, God, thanks. And they'll go, 
you're talking to God? Yes. Seriously, it comes out of my mouth. It probably comes out of your mouth too, if you're a follower or if you're one that's wanting to please the Lord. But it does. I think it flows out of me. And my self-talk, the talk that you don't hear, that nobody hears, my self-talk, although it's got some, some pieces that need to be reworked and are still being reworked, I can tell you honestly, my self-talk is peppered with a variety of grateful expressions. How about yours? Grateful expressions. Yes, God. Or I'll say, way to go, God. Or I'll say, thanks, Lord. That's my favorite. I'm constantly saying, thanks, Lord. That's awesome, Lord. Lord, my heart is so full. I say that a lot, too. I'm so full, Lord. Okay, God. You know, Lord. I trust you. We got this, Lord. Those are some of the th phrases that play in my head regularly. In the bad times, as well as, you know, the times when my car breaks down or when I'm in physical pain or when my husband's health is an issue. Like Tuesday, my husband fell in our studio here off the ladder, fractured his face in three places, broke two vertebrae in his back. He actually should be paralyzed or maybe not even here. They're, they're all three pieces and all two pieces, things that will heal on their own. And I'm saying, thank you, Lord. I got tingles in my fingers even now. Thank you, Lord. It could have been so much worse. Thank you, Lord. He's in pain, but I'm thanking the Lord that he's going to heal. Amen. I'm thanking him. So the good times, like when my son comes home with his new wife and they're going to live close to us, I'm loving that. And in the bad times when my husband falls, being grateful. How's your live streaming? How's your self-talk? How's your gratitude? I believe all of us can use more, more um, concentrated effort in just expressing thanks. Gratitude is what brings us closer to Jesus. It really, truly is. On the notes, I've included a whole mess of Bible verses. If you'd like to read it and study more, they are on the notes on, on, at Under Deborah's Palm. And I am so grateful for you as you tuned in today. And I hope you'll tune back. Thanks, and see you next time.